Okay, so now moving on to the last part, and this is sort of um, forward looking to what's gonna come in unit three more, um, is so the convolution, this is a very important result. The convolution of two functions in the time domain, which is what we were doing, is equivalent to multiplication of their Laplace or their Fourier transform. And you guys have done Laplace transforms, by the way, right? You use the letter S in Laplace transforms. You, you just substitute that S with J omega. So S could be a complex number, say I plus J omega, right? If you just say, if you just replace, if you say that the real part of S is zero, you get all of Fourier transforms. That's it. Fourier transforms are just a simplification of Laplace transforms. So anyway, so that's why they're, they're treated very equivalently in most cases. So the point is that the convolution of two functions in the time domain is equivalent to multiplication of their Laplace transforms, which means, I'm not gonna go into the derivation here, you can look it up in your, in your own class. Very fundamental result. So you're doing a convolution, that's the same as, so the multiplication of the Laplace transforms, S here represents the Laplace transform, of F and G, the multiplication of that is just the Laplace transform of the convolved function, okay? H of S is equal to F of G, okay? This is a very important property. And so just to go back to the drug infusion case, I know you don't, you may not remember the formula for the Laplace transforms, but the infusion, you have a step function, the Laplace transform of a step function is just one over S, my, my, my infusion was of the, uh, uh, was five, so the Laplace transform of that is five over S. The exponential for e to the bar at, the Laplace transform is one over S minus a. I was just using an impulse response of e to the bar minus t, so that becomes one over S plus one, right? So I, these were the two Laplace transforms, one for the input, one for my impulse response. If I take the product, I get this, I do a partial fraction decomposition, and then I take the inverse Laplace transform, I just get this, which is what you get from your differential equation. That also um, another thing was we t we always have seen with Laplace transforms. I don't know if you remember these tables; it, they used to annoy me so much. But e to the bar at used to be this, and then this weird looking function used to be that, right? Right. Um, for the for the case, okay. So now if we put n is equal to one, right, in this, the Laplace transform is just one over s minus a squared, which is just the product of these two things together, right, which means that, um, which means that t to the bar e a t should just be the convolution of e a t with itself. Does everybody see that? So the, because you're seeing n is equal to one, you get one over s minus a squared, which is the product of these to taken together. That means the convolution of this with itself should just be t times e to the bar a t. Let me just prove that down here, where you convolve e to the bar a t, a tau, a e to the bar a t minus tau, which we just get over. It's a very fun way uh, to look at a lot of things you've learned so far. And okay, so the, in this specific example, why would you want to take the convolution of an exponential with an exponential, right? And that's my final example for today. <coughs> okay, so say, so again, this is a result you may or may not know. So you, everybody knows Poisson processes, right? Memoryless processes. You know. No? Okay, so Poisson processes. Um, so radioactive decay is a classic example of a Poisson process where, 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 so you have a certain amount of radioactive material, right, and that defines um, sort of how many, how many decay events you'll see in a given time interval. Poisson process is any memoryless process. You're standing at the traffic intersection. How many cars are gonna pass this traffic intersection at a given time of the day in a 10 minute time window? That's a Poisson process, okay? Any Poisson, it's fundamentally just a process where the occurrence of one event is independent of the previous event, you can think of it as the limit of, it. you can, a lot of the, the definition, um, sorry, the derivation of the Poisson probability distribution just comes from the binomial distribution as your n goes to infinity in the binomial distribution. If you're doing like infinity of these events, then you get the Poisson process out. You can look at that derivation on Wikipedia. But the intuition of that is just literally you're starting at a traffic intersection, the number of cars that pass by in 10 minutes, 
is going to be that. The mean for the mean for that 10 minute window statistical distribution is just half of the mean for the 20 minute distribution. Radioactive decay is a Poisson process, so on and so forth. But anyways, so in a Poisson process, between two occurrences of an event, the time delay that exists is defined by an exponential probability distribution. So when you have a Poisson probability distribution and there's an exponential probability distribution that defines, so what is the time delay? What is the probability distribution of the time delay between two cars passing the intersection in that 10 minute window? That's given by an exponential probability distribution. And now, so you can think of it at the very molecular level, if there are Poisson processes everywhere in the, at the molecular level too, so say you're looking at like DNA replication, transcription, whatever, um, there are two enzymes involved, one after the other, both of them work in a Poisson way, they take some reagent, they take some substrate, do something to it, and say you're measuring something which comes as a result of two enzymes working one after the other. Both of them are Poisson, right? Sure, it's, I mean, it's, depend, it's dependent on the context. There are many scenarios where they are truly independent of each other, right? Um, in that, sure, they can be regulating each other, in which case it's not Poisson anymore, but there are many scenarios where they're truly independent of each other. Like a, it's like an assembly chain, uh, like a, what's it called? Assembly line, yeah. So, yeah, so, and so, and so the, but the idea is that, so the exponential probability distribution defines the time delay between the occurrences of two Poisson, or two events of which are characterized by Poisson process. So now if you have two such processes involved in the creation of a product of interest, right, something that you're measuring, say, right, then basically the time delay between, uh, the probability distribution of the time delay between the synthesis of two different molecules will be given by the convolution of the exponential distribution describing each Poisson process. Does that make sense? So let's think of an example. So say I have, okay, so primase and polymerase, right? For example, DNA primase that would lay down a primer, or RNA primase, would lay down a primer, right? And then polymerase will come along, right? And then DNA polymerase would elongate that primer. Right, for example. So you can think of that as two different Poisson processes, right, where the laying down of the primer is one Poisson process, the elongation of that is another Poisson process, and then say you're measuring the fragment that came out, right? So there's an exponential probability distribution associated with the time delay of the primase. There's another exponential probability distribution associated with the time delay of the polymerase. And then now you're looking at so when both of them are in the system, right, and I'm measuring these fragments out, between the synthesis of two different fragments, what's the probability distribution of that time delay? That's just a convolution of those two exponential distributions. And so you get basically something like this out, right? And so if you get something, how does this make sense? So this function is just, it's, so you have an exponential, this function starts at zero, right, and goes up and then goes down, right? That's what t times e to the power at looks like. And how does that make physical sense? Now, to get the synthesis of a fragment, if your time delay is zero, that's not possible. Two independent processes are happening here, so some time delay has to exist before you get any synthesis. In the case of an exponential distribution, the highest probability is at zero time because it's very likely that it'll happen right after. But when you have two multiple processes involved, you have zero probability of getting anything at simultaneously because, because, um, because two different processes have to take place. The likelihood that they'll take place at the same time is, in fact, it's impossible. That's why even, even something as simple as the convolution of two exponentials is very important. And then I've listed some MATLAB functions for convolution here, but I'll be coming back to this a lot more 